that he would want improved as well. But moving on, and we have Mr. B. Krishnamurti now. He's MD, 4P International Private Limited. He joins us from Chennai, and he has Urad on his plate to talk to us about. Thank you, Manisha. Uh, at the outset, I profusely thank the IPGA for this opportunity. Uh, I will now briefly cover you know, Karif crop outlook for world. The world is uh, also known as Black Grand. In international trade, it is known as Black Netway. Its botanical name is Vidnamungu. This is consumed mainly, you know, for breakfast snacks like idli, dosa, vada. In South India, you know, it is being consumed for time immemorial uh, as essential breakfast snack. And during the last 30 years, it has now spread to the whole of the country as well as, you know, to the whole of the world. Borat is uh, grown uh, both as Rabi crop as well as Karif crop. Rabi contributes 25% of the total crop, while the balance 75% share comes from Karif. Since the Karif uh, contributes about a, a lion's share, the importance is there for always Karif crop only. This black gram is grown mainly in India and Myanmar. One peculiar characteristic of Borat is that it doesn't have a substitute. For example, if thur, if thur crop is in short supply, we can always shift to lentils and peas, etc., which are similar in taste and protein content. But if Vorad is in short supply, there is no other pulse you know, which can substitute shortfall. India has been you know, meeting its uh, domestic requirements by, by improving domestic crop size steadily, while importing only the shortfall from Myanmar. However, during the last three years, policy decisions have been taken to encourage Indian farmers more by increasing minimum support price consistently and by curtailing imports from Myanmar. 2020 Karif crop, you know, it is sown in nearly 38 lakh hectares, which is almost the same as that of the last year. Madhya Pradesh has emerged to be the highest growing state of world, with sowing of more than 40% followed by Uttar Pradesh with 18%, Maharashtra and Rajasthan with 10% each, Gujarat and Karnataka 3% each, with a few other states contributing insignificant numbers. Coming to the expected production of wood in this current season, this heavy serving of 38 lakh hectares should ideally yield about 2.9 million tons. But I would imagine this year too, just like the last year, Karif crop production would fall quite short of expectations. This year, Southwest monsoon season started off quite well in June, but fell short in July. August has literally dumped huge rains in almost all world growing states like Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, and Karnataka. Such heavy August rains were not seen during the last 44 years. September month two, which is the last month of the season, Central Indian states are likely to experience above normal rains. So these torrential rains are believed to have damaged the standing world crop. Another problem we have faced this year is, in some states like Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan, in some areas, the standing world crops have been infected by yellow mosaic, which would reduce the yields further. Last year, the Karif target was 2.9 million tons for 37 like hectares uh, sown, you know. But, while the, but the actual crop was revised downwards to 1.3 million tons as per the fourth advance estimate issued by the government of India. I think this year also, product production from Karif would not cross 1.3 million tons or probably even less. And this means vis-a-vis -vis target a shortfall of nearly 1.6 million tons in Karif. Rabi is absolutely all right. Now let me briefly touch on Myanmar world because India uh, you know, imports uh, Myanmar wood whenever there is a shortfall in the domestic production. Myanmar produces about 6 lakh tons every year and nearly 80% of its production comes to India only. While roughly 10% goes to the rest of the world, the balance 10% is carried forward the next year. As in the end of August 2020, Myanmar is believed to be holding a stock of approximately 1,75,000 tons. Indian importers have already finished importing I guess the permits issued to them by DGFT by 31st August. That was the last date for imports. Indian stock, Indian stocks as at the end of August are very, very low. Only government agencies like NAFED, they are holding a stock of approximately 150,000 tons. Coming to the demand for wood in India, 
I my personal estimate is this is about 22 lakh tons per per annum, with an annual increase in demand of about two two percent. Considering Kharif production to be quite low at 13 lakh tons, and uh, already Rabi has given us somewhere somewhere about 6.5 lakh tons, and taking into account forward stocks of Nafed about 1 lakh 50 thousand tons, and if you estimate an import of Bharat from Myanmar of over 2.5 lakh tons. India will still be left with stocks of just about a lack of tons at the end of August 2021. I think the stock inventory scenario is not really greatly encouraging. The prices of best quality word, which we call SQ in Myanmar parlance, are likely to be steady, steady to form going forward, considering supplies to be just about matching the demand. Taking the base as Chennai prices. For best quality SQ world, which are now prevailing at 75 rupees per kilo or 980 dollars, 980 US dollars per ton, they are likely to be stable and a little firmer going forward. The downward risk is not even three rupees per kilo, or approximately you can say 3,000 rupees divided by about 40 dollars per ton. Now coming to the impact of COVID, COVID-19 has brought new challenges to millers. Millers have suddenly discovered. That consumers are preferring to buy online. They have distinctly understood that the future business will rest with those who are able to market their produce under branded consumer packs of half kilo and one kilo. There is a future. I would like to conclude by saying that you know nowadays factors which are beyond human control are playing a very vital role on supply side. The best example, as you know. The erratic or abnormal or deficient rains, and another example is you know black swan events like COVID-19, which has been disturbing the normal activities. So millers need to understand these things, and uh, you know plan their milling activities so that supplies to consumers you know happen unhindered. Okay, I, uh, I mean uh, that's all I have to say, and uh, thanks uh, to all and to Ibga for this great opportunity. Any queries, in I will answer. Absolutely, Mr. Krishna Murthy. We will come back to you with queries. I was actually listening and you know looking to questions that the participants have been asking for, and they have been quite plenty. So I am going to come to each one of you with all the questions.